Good afternoon dear viewers, I am Dr. Srinivas P, Consultant Interventional Cardiologist at Narayana Multispeciality Hospital, Mysore. At the outset, I would, I would like to wish you all a very healthy World Heart Day which we are going to celebrate on the last Sunday of this month that is 29th September. Now what is this World Heart Day? Basically, it is a day to create an awareness about a heart healthy lifestyle. We all want you to be a heart hero that is what is aimed at this year basically the slogan for this year is for my heart your heart and for all our hearts with this brief introduction i would like i would like to speak a few words on a important cardiac condition which is growing to epidemic proportions of late that is heart failure now what is this heart failure heart failure is a condition where See, we know that the heart is basically a muscle pump. It's basically a muscle pump which pumps the blood out of its chambers and then receives the blood from the other organs. Now, when the heart muscle fails to pump the blood effectively or sometimes it's unable to receive the blood properly, both these conditions are termed as two different components of heart failure. Sometimes patients can have both these problems in the same situation. But what causes this heart failure? The most common cause for heart failure in adult population is ischemic heart disease that is coronary artery disease that is blockages in the heart particularly when it causes a condition known as MI or heart attack. A certain area of the heart can get damaged and it can ultimately lead to what is called as LV remodeling or the change in the shape of the heart and then the pump effectively fails. Other important cause for heart failure being a valvular heart disease. We, there are many components in the heart. There are very various structures in the heart. If the valve functioning is not good, if there is a, the valve is not opening properly or there is too much leakage in the valves, it can still lead to heart failure. Other common conditions being diabetes, hypertension, arrhythmias, that is rhythm disturbances, sleep apnea. There are so many, there is a whole list of conditions causing heart failure. Anything that can damage the heart muscle can end up with a heart failure. Now. As we already discussed that there can be two forms of heart failure. In simple terms it can be called as forward heart failure when the heart is unable to pump the blood effectively. When we what we known as the ejection fraction we calculate what is called as the ejection fraction that is the pumping capacity of the heart. If it is less than 40 percent normally it should be around 60 to 65 percent. If it is less than 40 percent which is called as heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. You can still have a lot number of patients still have a condition known as heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. You can have an EF of more than 50%. Ultimately, both of them manifest with symptoms. What are those symptoms which you should be aware of? First and foremost is shortness of breath. If you are having an undue shortness of breath, particularly on exertion while climbing stairs, it could be a symptom of heart failure. You please have to consult a doctor if you are having an undue or a recent onset dyspnea or shortness of breath. Patient can also have fatigue on exertion. Most of these symptoms are exertional. When the heart failure is very severe, you can still have a symptom at rest. That is, say a person unable to lie down at night. After two to three hours of sleep, he may try to, he, he, he gets up panting for breath. That could also be a symptom of heart failure. He can have evidence of uh, excess fluid in the body. He can have reduced urine output. The legs may be swollen. His face may appear swollen. All these can be symptoms of heart failure. Definitely you need to consult a doctor at this stage. When you go to a cardiologist, he will examine you and look for certain signs of heart failure. And it's a basically a clinical diagnosis. We make a clinical diagnosis out of your symptoms and signs and then subject you for some basic investigations like ECG, chest x-ray which gives us a lot of information. And then an important test called echocardiogram will be done which is a test to see how your heart is functioning and if there are any structural abnormalities or any specific etiology or cause can be identified. After doing this test, we then do also some blood test, some basic blood test will be done to see if there are any other abnormalities which need to be corrected. The after doing it, after doing all this workup and then a diagnosis of heart failure be made, we then recommend a certain 
set of treatments for you. The most important treatment in this, the cornerstone of therapy will be the fluid and salt restriction. Dietary restrictions are very very important in any person who has heart failure and symptoms of excess fluid in the body. So fluid and salt restriction are most important treatments when there is excess fluid in the body because of heart failure. And then there are three and four, three or four groups of medications which are very very important. We subject you for all these treatments. Now this is a simple overview of a heart failure treatment. But not all patients can be managed in as simple way as this. We may have to subject you for some additional tests, sometimes some advanced tests like cardiac CT, MRI or SPECT or sometimes we may even have to do a CAT study or a muscle biopsy to determine exactly what is the cause. So because the idea of doing is if we can identify a cause of heart failure by treating the cause there are every chance that uh, whatever abnormality is there it may get reversed. Second thing is after doing all these analysis, after doing all these treatments, patients generally improve and then the clinical follow up is very important. Because many patients continue to remain stable with all these medications and the basic therapies. However, some patients may not do well with this simple treatment. Some patients may not maintain a stable cardiac status with this level of treatment and they continue to have symptoms wherein we then plan next level of treatment that is advanced therapies for heart failure will come into the role. There are many device therapies available currently for the treatment of heart failure. We call it as cardiac resynchronization therapy, ICDs or CRTDs. Is there any surgical role for treatment of heart failure? Yes. When we see that there is a significant coronary block, there is a decreased blood supply to the heart which is causing a heart muscle damage. By treating the condition either by angioplasty or by CABG, there are chances that the heart function may actually improve. Then there are many surgical procedures like LV reconstruction where you actually sometimes the heart may be too enlarged. We may have to reduce the volume of the heart by surgical methods to improve the condition. Of course, you might have been hearing now and then that heart transplantation is coming of age that many patients are now terminally ill patients are now enlisted for heart transplantations and in the meantime there is there are many forms of bridge therapies like called LV assist devices there are devices which can be implanted either percutaneously or there are devices which can be implanted at surgery to support the heart till the patient gets a good having known all these things is there a way to prevent heart failure that is very important can we prevent heart failure yes there are various stages of heart failure. There is a stage called stage A where a person can be at risk of heart failure and that is when we have to identify those people who are at risk of heart failure and then modify all those risk factors. Most important being the proper adequate treatment of diabetes, hypertension. Hypertension is the one of the major causes for heart disease and heart failure. And of course we all know that hypertension most of the time is not adequately treated. So, we need to aggressively treat diabetes, hypertension, please avoid smoking and alcohol because alcohol in any quantities can damage the heart. So there is the recently the concepts are changing that there is nothing like moderate drinking because the drinking alcohol can still have some deleterious effects on the heart muscle. So avoiding smoking and alcohol is extremely important and then treating the underlying risk factors like diabetes hypertension and any structural heart disease that is identified can definitely help uh, limit the damage to the heart and then it definitely decreases the incidence of heart disease or heart failure. So with these few words on heart failure, I would like to again end this topic by wishing you a, a very happy, a healthy world heart day. Be a heart hero. Promise yourself, promise your near ones that you are going to maintain a heart healthy lifestyle. Thank you.